Hey everybody, it's Corey here. Uh, so today I'm working on a Can-Am Outlander 500 uh, and I have a slight tick in the motor which tells me that my valves are out of adjustment. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and adjust those valves. A um, couple things that we're gonna need to know. Uh, this is gonna be the same procedure for the 500s, the 570s, um, the 800s, and the 1000s. Any of these V-twin motors are pretty much gonna be the same. So obviously I've got my outside plastic and my seat off. I've got my rear valve cover for my rear cylinder and my front one right there. Um, first things first, make sure the machine is cleaned up. You're gonna have these valve covers open and it's gonna be exposed to all kinds of junk. Um, so you don't want mud and dirt and debris and other stuff falling down on your motor because um, it would obviously damage the motor. Uh, a couple of other things that you're gonna need is one, you're gonna need an eight millimeter. Um, I would use a ratchet wrench to be able to take those valve cover bolts off. And then you're also going to need a, a 14 millimeter Allen wrench. Um, and that Allen wrench is what we're gonna be using to turn the motor to get to top dead center. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to pop this valve cover off and then I'll show you what we've gotta do next to achieve top dead center. All right, I took the valve cover off. Um, it, I can't get it all the way off because the exhaust is in the way, but I don't feel like removing the exhaust because I'd have to take you know, those two bolts off, those two bolts off, a bunch of bolts up off here and some back here. And with my luck, I'd break one of them off and I can actually get in here with the cover in place. Here's what you need to look for. You see that tick mark right there? And then there's another tick mark from this view. You can see both of them. Those need to be flat with the top of the cylinder. So right here, you see right at the top of that cylinder, those tick marks need to go like this. They need to be completely parallel. So what we need to do is we need to turn the motor over until those are completely parallel. And not only do those need to be parallel, but the rocker arms, which are on top, right? Back. Well, let me go to the other side so I can show you. The rocker arms should be loose. That's how you know that you're at top dead center. So these little rocker arms, you can see that they're tight right now. You can see that the springs are compressed. Um, this rocker arm should rock back and forth just a little bit. Actually, that's what's causing your ticking. So that's how we know that we're at top dead center. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the 14 millimeter Allen wrench, we're gonna remove this plug, and then we're gonna stick our Allen wrench in there, and we will be able to, uh, let's see if we can pop it right off here, and then we'll be able to get in there, and there's another Allen wrench that you'll stick in there, and then you'll be able to rotate the motor. You only rotate this motor clockwise. You only rotate it clockwise, okay? So we're gonna turn this motor clockwise until we get to top dead center. Okay, and then we'll know that we're top dead center because all of these again will be loose and those two tick marks will be parallel, which tells me that we are at top dead center. Make sure all four of your springs are loose, all four of your rockers are loose. That way you know that you're at top dead center. So that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do now. All right, guys, so I've got my feeler gauge out, which you're gonna need. You've got your exhaust side, which is truly the side that is facing your exhaust valves. And then you've got your intake valves, which are facing towards your intake. So you can't mess it up. They do require different valve adjustments. So this valve adjustment on the exhaust side is gonna be 0.15. That's the mean, that's where it should be. I'm gonna upload the service manual link um, in the comments box, um, which by the way, if you appreciate this video, please comment below. Um, and it'll show you the specifications that you should be checking. Mine is too tight, I can tell you that right out the gate. I'm trying to fit this feeler gauge in here, which all you do is you put it right in below. It's kind of hard to see. Let me see if I can get this in here a little bit better. But you fit this gauge right in below the actual rocker arm and you can see I can't even fit mine in there. So what you what you need to do is crack this nut. Okay, this nut is a 10 millimeter and then you're gonna loosen 
you know, a bit of turn it by hand, the actual bolt. And you're gonna do that until you get within specs. And then you're gonna tighten down your lock nut. Okay, I still can't fit in there, so. Getting close, it should have a slight drag on it. It shouldn't be able to just go in super easy, but it also shouldn't go in so you're jamming it in there either. So that's, that's the difference, okay? So I'm gonna adjust this until I can get it in there. Um, sorry, I'm trying to get it in right here. There we go. Yeah, now you can see. So just below where the rocker arm is, you have the rotating, I forget what that tip is called, right in there couldn't see before. Um, see how it's kind of going in too easy now? That means I've loosened it up too much. And now it's starting to catch just a little bit and that tells me that I'm within specs. So now I want to be able to hold this and tighten down my nut without turning that in anymore. Perfect, and then I'm gonna tighten that nut down to just a 10 millimeter nut. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for my other exhaust valve. And then I'm gonna to go to 0 0.10 millimeters for my intake, doing the same thing. And this is the same procedure that we're gonna do for the front. So I'm not gonna show you that. It's gonna be identical. We're just gonna pop the cover off. We're gonna find top dead center again because you'll have to do that again for each cylinder. Um, and then you just want to get, again, 0.15 millimeters for your exhaust side and 0.10 for your intake side. Guys, this is not difficult, so don't get intimidated by this. Do not waste your money and bring this to a dealer. You can easily do this, um, especially, you know, if you've got a little bit of mechanical experience. Good luck. If you've got any questions, drop them in the comments box, and uh, I'll be sure to address those. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a good day.